The April 20th, 2021 meeting of the Carlington School District Board of Directors is called to order. Member of our audience, Mr. Smith, would you want to lead us in the pledge? Thanks. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and Thanks, Reese. Will the Secretary please call the roll? Director Hunter. Here. Director Frank. Here. Director O'Brien. Here. Director Pushkar. Here. Director Zaleski. Director Simsek. Here. Director Mendoza. Will be here this evening? Director Apple. Is that me? Here. Director Shriver. I couldn't, I can't understand. We invite the public to ask any questions at the beginning of each meeting on items that are on our agenda. Does anybody in person or online have any questions they wish to ask? I do see one here in person. Um, I just wanted to know, did the, um, the right. the COVID antigen satellite testing program that you're going to be implementing in, is that going to be mandatory or are you going to have the opportunity to opt out? Good question. I think Dr. Kreider. Yeah, it's a very good question. And just for those that, that uh, who are viewing from, from home, if you couldn't hear the question, the question was in regard to one of the items that's on the board agenda for this evening is to approve the antigen testing through a cooperative agreement with um, Allegheny County Health Department. And the question specifically asked, would it be uh, mandatory or voluntary, assuming for students to participate in that program? Um, it will be voluntary. It will also come with some other components to it with uh, parental consent for children who are under the age of 18. If it's a student who's above the age of 18, they could opt to do it themselves and sign off. Um, regardless, as, a, as our district policy, uh, we will most likely have parental consent regardless of, of age, just so that the parents are aware uh, once they're in the schoolhouse here that we want to have parents to be aware of that. Uh, there's several tiers to that, and I'll cover it in my superintendent's report also. Um, but one definitely is the consent, and with that consent form, making sure that there's awareness that the test result will be shared with Allegheny County Health Department, uh, also with Pennsylvania Department of Health, and then most likely with CDC. So um, basically what we become is we become our own MedExpress where we can deliver tests um, and test individuals on site here, but mainly just keeping it towards um, our students. Go ahead, follow-up question. Yeah. Will they be, will their names and everything then be given down the line to everyone, or will they be a number? So the question there is whether or not the student information would be shared along to Allegheny County and, and those other agencies, or would it just be a number or a statistic? And it would the cooperation agreement that we have would share the student information. So it would be basically identical to going to uh, MedExpress, getting the test done there, where MedExpress then forwards your information along to Allegheny County and Department of Health uh, for processing so that they, they know uh, for contact tracing efforts, they can follow through with that. You're welcome. Any other questions? In, let's try microphone. Any other questions in person? No, uh, Mrs. Anoon. Any questions online for agenda items? Okay, very good. There is a time at the at the end of the meeting for other questions that are not agenda items. Moving on, then we have. Um, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to approve minutes from previous meetings. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve number 2.1, the minutes to the Finance Committee meeting of April 13th, 2021, and number 2.2, .2, the voting meeting of March 16th, 2021. Do I have a motion for those two items? I so move. Second. <clears throat> Moved and seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. I'll report that we had an executive session prior to this meeting where we discussed personnel, negotiations, and student matters. Dr. Schreier, I'm looking to you for our superintendent report. Yes, I'm ready. Thank you, Mr. Shriver. Um, superintendent's report, once we get it pulled up here on the screen. 
We'll focus in on a few items that are actually on the on the board agenda for this evening. Uh, one of those items is the updated health and safety plan. And with the updated health and safety plan, uh, what we've been doing throughout the course of this school year is uh, when policy changes from the state, we've updated our uh, health and safety plan to make sure that it is fully aligned and compliant with all the regulations that are required. Um, in this update, there are mainly three updates that uh, that you'll see in the policy. Um, the first uh, provides us with an opportunity to uh, provide opportunities for larger gatherings and field trips. Prior in our health and safety plan, we did not allow for uh, large group assemblies. We did not allow for field trips. Um, so now that we've we've moved forward with making progress on on vaccinations, making progress on the data that we've collected up to this point in the school year, uh, with our safety protocols that have been. Um, that has definitely helped mitigate the spread inside the school. Uh, we feel safe to move forward with um, types of events such as graduation, the prom. We also have a 50th anniversary celebration coming up. So those are types of examples of large group gatherings uh, that as a district we're looking to, to host that prior to this, our health and safety plan would have restricted us from, from doing. Um, also on tonight's agenda is a field trip for one of our classes to Gettysburg. Uh, we'll also be able to be able to sponsor that trip to, to Gettysburg as well. Again, taking proper safety precautions in place uh, as students travel on buses and uh, they're fully compliant in Gettysburg with uh, different types of protocols that they have in place. So uh, we're comfortable moving forward. Again, making sure that any field trip that we approve uh, meets the criteria and we can, we can make sure that our, that our students and staff are safe on those trips. Uh, the second piece is it will eliminate the requirement to conduct temperature screenings upon arrival. The data that we have uh, viewed from some recent research that has been conducted over the past few months is that the temperature screening is not necessarily one of the best indicators of, of whether or not uh, an individual has COVID. And so taking that out allows our, our students to come into the building without having the, the temperature screen, but then also putting into place uh, visual types of screening mechanisms to help with the identification. In working with our school nurses um, and just our students in general, the self-report of any symptoms has been um, reliable, uh, and we're getting those reports from individual students themselves, also from teachers to indicate that a child looks symptomatic, and then also just upon first arrival in, in the morning, uh, just doing visual screenings of, of students, we feel confident that uh, that precaution will be, will be good. And then adding one layer that was asked as far as the, the question prior to, uh, to the report here is uh, getting into participation with the antigen testing pilot program through Allegheny County Health Department. Uh, over the past month, Allegheny County reached out to Carlinton along with uh, four or five other school districts in strategic locations that Allegheny County uh, wants to partner with to potentially expand upon an antigen testing program that could expand later in the fall so that uh, schools could be sites to uh, take uh, antigen tests for individual students who are displaying symptoms or if school districts would also want to put in procedures such as before groups of students go on a field trip or before students participate in large group gatherings that they could go through and, and, uh, and conduct those tests. Uh, as previously mentioned, the antigen testing program would require parental consent. And I think the way that, that we're approaching it is more or less two-pronged. One, it, it, it provides a service to, to our community so that if a parent is concerned that their child is um, showing symptoms at school, we're able to get a, a rapid test result back to that parent very quickly at, at no charge. Uh, it saves the, the parent, the family, the trip um, to a medical like MedExpress or any other vendor to, to get that test completed. Uh, saves them a copay if they would have one that would go with it. And also just gives them quick peace of mind, uh, regardless of whether the, the test shows up positive or negative, gives them a quick result. So it's a pretty simple process that, that is involved. Our uh, certified school nurses will be trained by Allegheny County Health Department to administer uh, the test. And we're still working with Allegheny County to, to work out uh, what those procedures will look like. But their goal is to expand upon that uh, and make it more readily available to other school districts across 
Allegheny County. So those are on the board agenda. Those are the, the three pieces to the updated health and safety plan that uh, that have changed since our last adoption. The next slide talks about uh, several policies that are up for board adoption for this evening. Uh, this will be a process that we'll go through over the next several board meetings to take a good solid look at, at all of our policies to make sure that they are updated and they reflect uh, our current process and, and belief. Um, so these are on the agenda for the first reading. Uh, the first one is attendance at meetings via electronic communication, which is something that we've experienced over the, the, the course of this school year. Um, basically, it waives the requirements um, would need to make in request in advance to uh, the board president of their attendance uh, attending remotely. Uh, it waives that in the event of, of an emergency. Uh, 103 and 104 is a very large policy, very well needed policy, discrimination in, in Title IX harassment for both staff and for students. Um, and this policy is, is required by uh, for us to, to stay in compliance. But basically what it does is it implements a, a new policy so that the district can process and handle uh, any Title IX types of complaints that are related to sexual harassment. And they would have anything to do in the workplace with our staff and then also with students attending uh, in regard to uh, sexual harassment. Uh, it puts a compliance officer in place. That will be myself as a superintendent. And then also puts a uh, Title IX coordinator in place, which will be our human resources coordinator. And in that process, there are also other uh, individuals, investigators, uh, final decision makers, and other individuals that we need to name uh, as we move through implementing the, the policy that we will, will put in place. But that will bring us up to compliance with uh, Title IX regulations. Uh, policy 111 is an update with lesson plans. There's very minor changes with that. Uh, disciplining students with disabilities, behavior support, and confidentiality. Those are uh, in board policies 113. Um, what that does, there's, it, it, there's some minor changes really, but it clarifies some definitions, um, really outlines the role of positive behavior support plans, and then also addresses any issues that, that come up with, with FAPE. And FAPE is uh, free and appropriate public education for uh, students with disabilities. The next slide has a few others. Uh, 122 and 123 talk about extracurriculars and athletics. There's very minor changes in, in those policies. Uh, same with uh, sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, extracurricular participation by home education students just includes that they would have access to JROTC, which is something that uh, the district does not have, but the interest in putting that in is in the event we would have a JROTC program uh, that we would be uh, opening that up to students who are who are home educated. Uh, Trauma-informed approach in 146.1, that's a new policy, and that just walks through uh, the process and uh, the training and implementation of trauma-informed approach. And trauma-informed approach is training that we have provided for our staff over the past few years, falls under the, the um, responsibility of our pupil services department, uh, and also with the Title I uh, comparability of services in uh, 150. This is also uh, a new policy that will be uh, put in place for the first reading tonight. Uh, basically, that just ensures that all students receive a quality education, that we take uh, a hard look at how we allocate our funding resources um, to make sure that we accomplish those goals for, for all of our students. So that's a major component of, of the first read. We'll have the first read tonight. And uh, if there are any questions with those or any revisions, we'll have the opportunity then for, for second read before those uh, policies are, are put into place. Uh, the last slide uh, talks a little bit about uh, both PowerSchool and the 50th anniversary. Uh, in a most recent e-blast that was sent out by Mrs. Herman, uh, was uh, gave provided some information on, on PowerSchool, which provides us now the opportunity to uh, provide access to both parents, guardians, and, and students uh, to have access to their live grades throughout the course of the school year. Uh, so parents should receive this week. We've sent out mailings, I believe, to our high school students. And I believe elementary is coming out in the mail tomorrow. So by the end of this week, all families should receive their paperwork. Uh, the paperwork has some very important information on it. It has 
uh, both username and password credentials to access their unique site to access uh, student grades and be, also be able to update student demographic information as well. Uh, to help parents and students with setting up those accounts, there's pretty detailed directions on how to go through that process to set that up. Uh, Mrs. Herman will also be sending a, a follow-up e-blast that will have links to um, tutorials and videos on our website to help people navigate through that process. And we will continue to examine the, the usefulness of PowerSchool and the different types of abilities that their capabilities that, that it has um, that we can pass along to students and parents and also to our teaching staff as well um, to help us work smarter, not harder, uh, to provide more information, more transparent information, uh, more valuable information to, to all stakeholders throughout the learning process. So it's something that, that, that's very exciting uh, for all of us. And uh, just one thing as far as updating with grades, just be conscientious of, of some of those longer uh, labor intensive types of assignments that, that do take time for teachers to, to turn around time with, um, such as lab reports, essays, um, at research papers, and so on. Um, sometimes term papers can take up to three, four weeks to go through in grade. So just recognize that there will be some lag in time with, with getting those grades uh, posted up online. But I think uh, parents and students will definitely find this to be a very good resource to, to frequent on a, on a weekly basis just to, to keep up with their grades and their academics. And then another thing that uh, I know that our senior class is very excited about, and then also uh, pretty much the, the entire school here at the uh, junior senior high school for sure, um, is excited for the, the 50th anniversary that we celebrate this year in 2021. Back in 1971, Carlington High School graduated it, it, its first class. And recently, uh, some members of our, our senior class met with um, some of those graduates from 1971. I think they met out at Eaton Park uh, last week just to go over some of their experiences and get a little bit of a, an understanding of what school was like back in 1971. And um, during the, uh, the anniversary, there is a, a cornerstone here at the high school that has a time capsule in it. And pretty much the, the main event on uh, May 14th at five o'clock will be to open up that, that time capsule. So Mr. McDade has received very specific instructions on how to remove the time capsule from the, from the building so it's not damaged and so that we can easily replace it uh, back into the building itself. Uh, and the kids are they're excited to find out what is in that time capsule. And what they've also have done is, is worked to collect different artifacts that at the end of the ceremony that they can put back into uh, the time capsule as well, um, so that in, in future years when the time capsule is, is pulled back out, that others will be able to to enjoy some of that historic aspect of um, what school life was like in, in 2021, which is certainly a unique experience for sure. Um, so that event will take place. It'll start outdoors uh, right outside the, um, the roundabout where there are buses turn around uh, here at the, the high school. Uh, you can see the cornerstone right there that will be removed. Uh, we'll have some speakers, uh, some people from uh, some of the graduates from, from 1971, um, some other individuals who will give some uh, good information as far as uh, good speakers and then uh, refreshments. And then, like I'd mentioned before, putting in new artifacts back into the, uh, uh, into the time capsule. So I think what will be valuable is having uh, some of our alumni back uh, who will be able to put a little bit of context to uh, the artifacts that we pull from the time capsule just to explain what it was and what the significant was at, at that time. So that once again, May 14th, uh, five o'clock here at the high school, um, everyone is, is welcome to attend and we'll certainly have uh, protocols and procedures in place to make sure that the, the event is safe for all to attend. And that's my report for this evening. You, Dr. Kreider. Any questions from any board member on his report items? If not, we can move on. Uh, committee reports. Uh, Parkway West Career and Tech Center. Uh, Director Apple, anything you want to share on Parkway West? We had a meeting. Um, yeah, thank you. We had a meeting on the uh, first Tuesday of the month, as usual. Um, 
And a few of the highlights are um, on the 7th of this month, uh, Parker West CTC, they coordinated a countywide virtual career fair. So not just um, our CTC, but, but students and uh, throughout the entire county um, were able to participate. So that just goes to show that um, Parkway is a leader in the career and technical education um, realm here in, in Western Pennsylvania. Um, another thing that's coming up is a, uh, a career summer camp. Um, we're gonna do this live. So it will actually take place out at the, uh, the CTC. Now this, this is a yearly thing and geared towards fifth and sixth graders who um, might be considering um, a career in technical education track. Uh, it is on Wednesday, June the 23rd and Thursday, June the 24th from eight to three. And um, interested folks can go on the parkwaywest.org website and it's at the bottom of the homepage. Um, they've already got 180 kids signed up. So it, it seems like it's gonna be a pretty popular event. Um, and what else is going on? So um, Skills USA is the, uh, um, is a competition between uh, various students at, at CTCs uh, really across the country. And they start with the, the district competitions. And we've had some Carlinton grads or Carlinton students um, do very well. Uh, Kira Hill took first place in, in photography. And we had a couple of third place uh, folks, Amanda McLean and Haley Boggs uh, with uh, Amanda had done a pin design and Haley had done a t-shirt design. The, uh, the first place winner goes to the state's uh, competition, which, um, well, it's usually a, a live trip to, you know, um, Harrisburg or Hershey or where, wherever it happens to be, that you're a bit dumb. Uh, it's gonna be virtual this year. So uh, congrats to Kira. Um, and then finally, I'd like to recognize um, the honors students from the third quarter. Um, Haley Boggs, Colin Crow, Mahavishnu and Vishnu Priya Duda, and um, Christopher Mazurek are all on the honors, uh, the director's honors list. So uh, that's all I have. If anyone has any questions, thank you, Joe. Moving on to Pathfinder, Director Hunshar, any updates for us on Pathfinder? Thank you, Jim. We'll have this month's meeting tomorrow night, but this is from the uh, March meeting um, of the principal's report. He, um, Nick Fratto said that we have 87 students. Much of the activities up to that month were virtual, but things have opened up considerably. I don't know if I ever explained to you our pride program. Pride program is the career program for the older young people. It's, it's very convenient in that we have the T train running through the Pathfinder campus so the kids could go and get their career opportunities to get to be able to uh, converse with employers and converse with customers. They jump on and go to South Hills Village. They could even go all the way downtown. It's just an, uh, an amazing opportunity for our kids. And it's called Pride. We're going to have 14 graduates this year. Seven will be from the jointure. Of course, we're in the jointure. And seven will be outside of the jointure. That'll drop the attendance to 73, but normally in July and August, we get a big boost. Tomorrow's Pathfinder meeting, we will decide on graduation, whether it be in person or virtual, and the date. That's the end of my report, Jim. Great. Thank you, George. Yeah. Uh, Shazda, I'm not sure if Director Zaletsky is on tonight. I don't believe she's Kelly are you there okay so we'll um Dr. Kreider I don't know if you are aware of any Shazda activities 
Okay, thank you. Moving on to legislative, PSBA, and federation update. We have Director Simsek. Okay, um, I'll start with uh, legislative and PSBA. So since our last meeting, go to uh, participate in advocacy day, um, kind of the usual topics come up, charter school funding reform and you know, all that. So um, that did come up. Another thing that, that we've been talking about is um, unfunded mandate waivers. So you know, PSBA is, is trying to encourage our ability to apply for a waiver for uh, mandates that we don't get funding for. Now that came up, I, I did get to speak with Senators Costa and Senator Fontana in that call. Their pushback was they wanna know specifically what um, mandates are affecting us in that way. So if there's specifics that we can provide, that, you know, they, they said that would be helpful. Um, they, they weren't, and I also spoke with Representative Kulik. Um, they're all supportive of, you know, reform for charter schools and for funding and, and so on. Um, but they're not, haven't been quite so encouraging. However, since then I've, I've spoken with you know, others at PSBA and there's um, talk of House Bill 272, which is moving on to the Education Committee for consideration. That is a bipartisan bill. So there's some encouragement there. Um, so that is sponsored by Representative Joe Cerisi and Representative Wendy Thomas. I can say that co-sponsors do include Repre um, Representative Deasy and Kulik. So they are co-sponsors on the bill. So this um, House Bill 272, it requires charter school trustees and administrators to live by the same financial and ethical reporting standards as public school board and um, school district officials live up to. It also requires charter school meetings to follow the Sunshine Act which they currently do not. Um, it also requires a statewide data-driven cyber charter school tuition rate to make sure all taxpayers are getting the same results for the same dollars and ending the wide disparity in rates affecting tuition. Um, the plan requires charter schools to use special ed education fair funding formula that public schools use. Um, and it also requires charter schools to carry enough insurance to take care of charter school closes or goes out of business. So those are pretty important things. Um, be interested to see what happens in education committee. I know the education committee met yesterday, but that was not on their agenda. So we'll look for that in future. Um, so I think that's about it for uh, Slative, PSBA. As far as the foundation, we we haven't had a meeting. Well, there's just kind of kind of stalled right now in the current conditions. So thank you. You, and that's encouraging news about the legislative update. Yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed. Any last questions from any board member on those committee reports? If not, we'll move on to uh, section four of our meeting. So under under section four, we'll entertain a motion to approve the following three items. Number one, the additions to the 2020-2021 conference and field trip list as submitted. Number two, the district's participation in the COVID antigen satellite testing location with oversight from the Allegheny County Health Department Public Health Laboratory. And number three, um, number three, to approve the revised health and safety plan of the Carlington School District for the 2020. 2020, 2021 school year. Do I have a motion for those three items? So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? If no discussion, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Under section five, finance, we have nine items. Approve the following items. Number one, the treasurer's report for the month of March 2021 as submitted. Month of March 2021 in the amount of $28,275.12. Number three, the renewal agreement between the district and the substitute teacher service, STS, for a two year period, provision of substitute teacher service. Number four, to approve the 2021-2022 administrative budget of the South Central Area Special Schools Committee or Pathfinder as submitted. Number five, to approve and accept the ESSER School Health and Safety Grant in the amount of $40,105 for the period of March 13th, 2020 through September 30th, 2022. 
Number six, to approve and accept the donation of 239 canisters of scrubs, Metaphene Plus disinfecting wipes from Amazon. Number seven, to approve the resolution authorizing interim real estate property taxes for new construction or major improvements to buildings located within the district. Number eight, to approve the athletic fund report for the month ending March 2021, $604.64. And lastly, number nine, to approve the activities fund report for the month of March 2021 with an ending balance of $85,303.03. Do I have a motion for those nine items? So moved. Moved on a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. And a quick shout out to uh, number six there. Uh, Amazon donated some nice equipment to the, the that reached out and, and made that happen. So thank you very much. Appreciate that. Under section six personnel, um, I'll entertain a motion for the following 11 items. Number one, to approve the additions to the 2020-2021 athletic supplemental list as submitted. Number two, to approve uh, and accept the resignation of Alicia Booz as the after-school COVID compensatory tutor at Crafton Elementary School, effective at the end of the day, March 31st, 2021. Number three, to approve Courtney Blocker and Rebecca Brethwaite as the after-school tutoring positions related to COVID compensatory services at Crafton Elementary School, retroactive to March 25th, 2021 and April 6th, 2021, respectively, and at the per diem rate and consistent with the terms of the Carlington Federation Teachers Collective Bargaining Unit Agreement. Number four, to approve the following aids for the positions of after-school tutoring related to COVID compensatory services at the per diem rate and consistent with the terms of the CFT collective bargaining unit agreement. Pamela Quinlan, Carlington Junior Senior High School, retroactive to March 25th, 2021. Denise Kazina, Carnegie Elementary School, retroactive to March 25th, 2021. And Carol Rust, Crafton Elementary School, retroactive to April 6th, 2021. Number five, motion to approve uh, Pamela Stone for the position of homebound instruction in the home of a student for six 30-minute sessions between the dates of June 21st and August 13th, 2021. Compensation is at the per diem rate and consistent with the terms of the CFT Collective Bargaining Unit Agreement. Number six, to approve Tony Lynn Jackson and Michael Cozy as instructors for the five-week SAT prep course retroactive to March 27th, 2021 at the per diem rate and consistent with the terms of the CFT Collective Bargaining Unit Agreement. Number seven, to approve the following educators to facilitate the Carlington Summer Academic Program, CASP, beginning June 19th through July 26th, 2021, five days per week from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Alicia Booz for writing, Brian Harowitz for reading, Andrea Harity for math. The teachers will be compensated at the per diem rate consistent with the terms of the CFT collective bargaining unit agreement. Number eight, to approve Jane Carr for the temporary position of general food worker at Carnegie Elementary School retroactive to April 12th, 2021, and consistent with the terms of the SCA collective bargaining unit agreement. Number nine, to accept the letter of resignation from Carnegie Elementary lunchroom playground worker, Sharon Volanek Tomanti, effective April 1st, 2021. Number 10, to accept the letter of resignation from high school custodian Anthony Kraus, effective April 15th, 2021. And lastly, number 11, to approve the requests for leaves of absence for employees number CFT 2021-09, SCA 2021-10, SCA 2021-11, SCA 2021-13, CM 2021-13, CFT 2021-14 and SCA 15. Do I have a motion to approve those 11 items? I so move. Thank you. Uh, moved and second. Second. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, any questions? 
If not, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, thank you. Motion carries. Um, number, or I guess under section seven, we have one item. I'll entertain a motion to approve the first reading of the revisions and updates to policies number 006.1, 103, 104, 111, 113.4, 122, 123.2, 123.2, 137.1, 146.1, and 150. Do I have a motion for that item? So, so moved. second. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? If not, we'll. Opposed, nay. And carries. Thank you. Old business. Any director of any old business they would like to bring up tonight? Hearing nothing, we'll look at new business. Any director of any new business they'd like to get? All right, moving to open forum. Um, any public have one question? If you would step up to the mic, that'd be great. Identify yourself. There is no mic. No mic. All right, just a Reese. Yeah, so I am uh, president of practice. My first question is regarding one of policy updates. Um, so I'm wondering if there's any policy that you would like to see in the morning, they no longer have to pass the check. Okay, and then if I don't know if you did this, but will the event the side door and the basement not be open then in the morning at all? Um, I think to still go through and do screen checks of, of the students, I think we'll, we'll still have them come through uh, just those entrances. But as far as those procedures, I'll leave that up to uh, Mr. Lochran to, to go through and implement his, his procedures to abide by what we've just passed tonight. But um, I can check with him. Okay, so, so, it's, so it's like, it's not that it's undone, it's that now it's in water. And I, I guess what in the past students would come in through that entrance because it was a lot of the parking lot. I understand. Um, so my other question is it talks about more in the uh, headline stuff uh, about the human resources coordinator. Uh, who is that? Our human resources coordinator was in January, and that is. Oh, is, is, is it a new position? It is. It's a it was established uh, in January of this year, and it is uh, Miss Kristen Butler. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Next question from the audience. This is Miss Smith as well. All right. No, I don't think we have plans for transportation director. No. Because he spent a lot of money on getting that program for the buses. And we don't, and I'm not saying anything for the people that were running it because that was not their job. I'm not trash talking anyone. But we spent a lot of money on a program throughout the buses. And I'm not sure if you guys are aware of how bad the buses are routed. And the reason that it's rather bad is because no one understands how to work the parameters of that program. Part of the money that we pay every year in upkeep on that program is, is to do the upkeep and to train the people how to use that program. And it's, it's not. We have buses that follow each other all day. The kids are getting picked up earlier than they need to be picked up because the buses are running here, here, here instead of a clean loop. We're wasting a lot of gas, we're wasting a lot of time, and we're we're having buses like you would drop off a kid and then three more buses come through. And that's just dangerous. There's there's no need for that. And if we're not gonna hire someone to use that program accordingly and set the parameters to make it make sense. You might want to think about maybe lending it to the bus company that we're using now because they know how to use the program. Because I know the companies that we're using now actually rerouted the buses and gave it over. And they said, no, we don't really want to do this. We'll wait till next year. So. 
I'm not real sure on when that conversation would have taken place on the the rerouting, but just to to clarify, we're not going to hire a director of transportation. I thought your question was more along the lines of a, a full time personnel for um, director of transportation. So the answer to that is no. However, we are looking at offering a, a stipend type of position for someone to take over the routing of buses who does understand one. I think it's very important. They understand the local community to know where our buses are going to understand that software, um, and how it can be programmed. And then three, be able to be available to continuously update in general, uh, as far as the bus routing, it takes place over the summer months, uh, June, July, August, as we continue to get new enrollment and then refined over the first few days sometimes to to get that. As you know, sometimes bus routes change slightly in the beginning. Um, so we will be offering a, a stipend position out to oversee the management of that software. Okay, is that going to be just someone in the school or is that open to anyone in the public? It'll be someone in the school. Okay, so it'll be a teacher or an administrator. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions in person? Nope. Uh, anyone online? Ms. Zanone? Fantastic. So Jack, are you able to unmute yourself? Yeah, I am. I didn't want to I didn't want to do anything yet till you gave me permission to speak because I didn't know if I was up next, but thank you. Uh how is everybody today? We're great. Thank you for joining us. How are you? Oh, I thank you for uh, allowing me to, to say a few words here. Uh, my name is Jack Kabistic. I live in Carnegie. Uh, both my children uh, went through the Carlington School District. And uh, I just wanted to touch base on um, just some of the things, uh, the partnerships that the school district provided during this pandemic, because I, I really think it's important that the school board knows this. And I'd like to, to have it on record. Uh, so when the pandemic started last year in March, I contacted the new superintendent who, who probably had so much on his plate. I don't even know why he took my, took my email, but he did. And uh, he asked him if, you know, if, if there's, if he wouldn't mind partners with us on the school lunch issue. And uh, he said, anything we need, uh, we, we can have. Uh, he put me in touch with Edmantage. Uh, we had a couple meetings. And so one of the things that we were able to do, and you're going to, uh, I thought this was kind of amazing is, you know, that you guys are in remote status and the lunches were pickup. So uh, those lunches were pre-made and they were pickup. So, you know, it, I, had, I thought that if any of the ones that weren't used would go to waste. So we were able to take all the ones that weren't used by partnering with Ed Mantage, the Aramark, uh, Pastor Sarah, Sarah Irwin and her congregants at St. John's uh, to uh, refrigerate them. And we were able to deliver, deliver those meals, uh, breakfast and lunches, to all the senior high rises in both Crafton and Carnegie, the low income senior high rises. So we were delivering them to Hannes Wagner, uh, Carnegie Towers, Crafton Plaza and Crafton Towers. And I can tell you right now, especially at the beginning of that pandemic, the, those seniors were basically isolated. Their, uh, their buildings were in complete lockdown. We weren't delivering them door to door. We had a system where we would bring them to, uh, a few members who would actually deliver them door to door. There was no contact between any of us, but throughout the year, not only at the beginning of that year, all the way going into uh, when you went back to uh, four days a week, which would be July, uh, January 25th, we were able to secure all the extra lunches that would have been in a landfill and deliver over 4,000 of those lunches to the seniors in Crafton and Carnegie. So uh, there's, it took a lot of work and a lot of people involved with that, but I really want to thank the school district's partnership and not, and just saying, let's do this and not really saying, well, what about this? What about that? They just were uh, open arms partners. And I think it was a fantastic program. So we really, uh, it's well appreciated. And then the other partnership I really want to thank is that uh, 
the school lunches last year for the summer. Uh, not school lunches, but we were able to provide free breakfast and lunch uh, last year through the summer. Uh, the school uh, worked with us on this. They, it wasn't, they weren't a sponsor. Uh, we took it upon ourselves, but they did allow us to use their property and they did uh, allow us to, um, they had Aramark help deliver our weekend bags on Fridays to the, to the site that we were uh, distributing at Crafton Elementary. So the site at Crafton Elementary, uh, we part, I, you know, partnered with the, the Crafton Ingram Rotary, uh, who's headed up by Jim Nagorski. Now that name may be familiar to a lot of you uh, Craftonites. Uh, he, he's just an exceptional individual. Also, uh, Megan Shriver, Jim, I know that name's familiar to you. And uh, there were um, the Carnegie Elks, who were, we were able to grant, I was able to get a grant from the Carnegie Elks for uh, $2,500. We used $1,000 for the program and we distributed the, the rest of the money at uh, 250 and $500 intervals to all the food banks in both Carnegie and Crafton. But uh, in that program, in the summer, we distributed on average, and I know this is accurate because Jim Nagorski did all the stats, 49.1 uh, lunches per day. Now that's the average, some days were less, some days were more. I mean, we've had days as high as 80 and we had days as low as 20, 25, but the average throughout the summer was 49.1 lunches a day, that lunch, breakfast and lunches that were given out. And every Friday, we provided every family with one to two weekend bags of food. So I appreciate your partnership on that too. There was no, no ands, ifs, or buts. Uh, Dr. Kreider and both Ed, he and Ed Mantis both said, whatever we can do to help, uh, we'll do whatever we need to do. And uh, there was never a no ever on any of this. So as you can see, both those programs were uh, we're done and done well, and uh, we hope to uh, also partner again for the school uh, summer lunches. I've already talked to uh, Dr. Kreider about the summer lunches for this summer. I know you have your summer program, so we'll see how that all fits in, and we'll work out something that complements whatever you're doing. But thank you very much for all your for all your assistance, everybody. Appreciate the partnership. I really do. Hey, Jack. I want to thank you for putting all that food into good use. You uh, thought outside the box, and I'm so thankful for you to be so involved in our community, even as a magistrate. Thank you very much. Jared. Well, it, it's it's definitely a team effort. There's it, it, no one person can do anything, but it, it's a team effort with a lot of different people. But thank you, thank you, George. Yeah, and Jack, I, I would just echo those those comments as well. All the all the thanks and, and praise you, you sent in our direction. I think we'd we'd send it all back uh, in your direction as well as the others that that you mentioned there. Um, we're very grateful uh, to have individuals in this community who extend themselves on behalf of others uh, to continue to provide services um, in sometimes in challenging times, and then also just on on regular day efforts. Um, and those partnerships, I think, are extremely valuable. I think that when you reached out in the very beginning of my superintendency here, um, I thought it was a great opportunity to to partner up with you to to get your historical knowledge about the district. Um, and uh, I, I think I look forward to continuing partnerships uh, with you as, as well as many of the other agencies that you mentioned there uh, throughout our district as well, just to continue to provide the that. Uh, there's family value types of services that we provide to our community. So thank you. And for, for everyone else who, who contributed throughout the course of the school year. Well, I appreciate that, but I, I think the, the school district really stepped up. So kudos to you guys. And uh, it, it really made it possible. So thank you. Jack, a quick thank you for me, a personal thank you. Uh, the community is so fortunate to have you do what you do and have all of your friends and, and, and neighbors pitch in and help each other out. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, thanks again. Like I said, it's a team effort. There's so many different people and so many different organizations that are, that, that really, I, I would say the pandemic hit everybody extremely hard, but I was pretty proud of all the work that so many organizations did and so many people did in our little communities that, that I think that we were able um, to provide a lot of a re relief to a lot of people uh, on a number of different levels. And I, I feel that while this pandemic was not easy for anybody, I feel that uh, there was a lot of response that was given in, uh, in these communities. So uh, bless everybody and thank you for all you do. Take care.
Uh, one last thing I will say, it was easy because every morning I could get up and say, thank goodness I'm not a school board member or, or working at the school right now. That had to be the toughest job of the year. So, Thank you. Uh, does, does anybody else in the public dare follow up uh, Mr. Kabistik's comments with other comments or questions? Ms. Sinone, is there anybody else out there? Nope. Okay. Thank you. I think it's a great way to end. Any board members have any follow follow up comments or questions before we close? All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Moved and seconded. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.